hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to finalize combined science paper 2 that was written in june 2024 we are going to revise section d which is the physics section in the final exam candidates are required to answer in two questions on the separate answer paper provided but we are going to revise all the questions from number 13 to number 15 since we are doing our revision so the first question was saying uh, state in two examples of characteristics that show continuous variation first i'm going to explain what is continuous variation it refers to gradual and seamless transition between different characteristics or traits without distinct boundaries or categories for example height weight shoe size blood pressure and temperature so these are some of the examples of characteristics that shows continuous variation uh, in this question candidates were just required to state in two examples from all the examples i've listed let us move on to part two uh, it is saying state the type of distribution that is represented by discontinuous variation so the distribution that is represented by discontinuous variation is known as discrete discrete distribution so let me explain what is discrete distribution it is a statistical distribution that shows probabilities of outcomes with finite values discrete distribution are characterized characterized by uh, discrete outcomes data can only take on specific distinct values it is also characterized by discontinuous variation data does not vary continuously but rather jumps from one distinct value another examples of discrete distribution we have binomial distribution and also poisson distribution let us move on to b part one it is saying when making five counts using the tally method state how many vertical lines and diagonal lines one can make so five counts it is going to have four vertical lines and one diagonal line so this is how we present five counts using the tally method we are going to have four vertical lines and one diagonal line and then part two is saying identify the type of data presentation method which uses uh, plotted points as a stage in the process of presenting data it is known as scatter plot it is a type of data presentation that shows the relationship between two numerical variables. And then, uh, last question on number 13, it was saying, describe the stages of constructing a pie chart. Uh, so the stages that are involved in the construction of pie chart, uh, the first, uh, you need to gather the information you want to represent in pie chart uh, for example you are going to count the number of cars that are passing through a certain road uh, you want to represent that data on pie chart uh, you are taking uh, the number of colors of cars that are passing through uh, maybe you are having the categories like white cars silver cars red cars black cars etc so you count uh, from a certain period of time to a certain period of time and you first gather that information so this second point is the one that i was explaining that you need to divide the data into categories that make sense of the pie chart for example you're going to divide into different uh, colors of the cars that are passing through a certain road at a given period of time and then this uh, the third step is you now need to calculate the percentage of each category relative to the whole 
for example let's say from eight to nine i was recording the cars that um getting into uh rgmi airport uh, for example from eight to nine i collected that uh information that 120 cars passed into the airport and then now i want to find the percentage of white cars maybe uh, from the data i collected i find out that 30 cars uh, they were white in color and now i want to calculate their percentages i'm going to say 30 over 120 times 100 percent i'm going to do for each and every category our next step i'm going to choose a key for example i'm going to have my crayons uh, i'm going to give a key that the green crayon is representing the green cars the yellow crayons they are representing uh, yellow cars and white is being represented by maybe i'm just going to leave if i'm representing on a blank uh, white page paper i'm going to say the blank space is representing white cars and then black i'm going to shade black representing the black car i showed that on the stages of construction of the pie chart so next i'm going to draw a circle you're supposed to use a canvas in order to draw a circle that is smooth so the next stage is that i'm going to add some slices on that pie chart maybe for example i collected 120 cars see so they were white so the 50 percent is going to be represented on that pie chart and then after that i need to add the title and finalize and refine my pie chart for example i'm going to write that on my title this is a pie chart that is representing uh, the colors of cars that are passing into airport from 8 to 9 a.m so this was the complete solution of number 13 that was in june 2024 let us now move on to number 14 number 14a write down the base units of the neutrons we should understand the difference between base units and derived units uh, examples of base units we have kilograms meters seconds etc and then uh, the derived units uh, we are going to have the units for force uh, the units for um, acceleration the units of velocity those are examples of uh, derived units so in this case we want to write the base units of neutrons of which we know that uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration and uh, mass is given in kilograms and then acceleration is meters per second squared so we are just going to write that force is equal to kilogram meters per second squared so the base units for mass is kilogram and then uh, the base unit of acceleration it is going to be uh, meters per second squared so we are going to write this is our base units of neutrons so this is how we present our solution let us move on to the next question part b it is saying fig 14.1 shows an instrument that is used to measure fluid pressure and then in part one we are supposed to name the instrument that is used to measure fluid pressure it is known as manometer it is also very important to know uh, the instrument that is used to measure uh, atmospheric pressure it is known as barometer and then on part two it is saying the liquid in the instrument in b1 is a density of 0 0.3 kgs per cubic meters and it rises by 10 centimeter on one arm when connected to a gas supply we're supposed to find the pressure of the gas if atmospheric pressure is two pascals 
uh, we need to take our gravity is 10 newtons per kg uh, so the uh, formula of calculating pressure of gas we say atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to change in height so we are given atmospheric pressure is 2 pascals and then we are going to add uh, pressure due to change in height which we are going to say it is equal to uh, it is equal to density times height times gravity so the density we are given our density is 0 0.3 kgs per cubic meter so we write 0 0.3 kgs per cubic meters and then the height it is supposed to be in meters we are having 10 centimeters uh, if we convert it to be in meters it is going to be 0 0,1 because we say 10 over 100 which is equal to 0 0.1 meters and then the gravity we are supposed to use this 10 newtons per kg Uh, so this kg is going to cancel this kg here this meter is going to change this um, cubic meters to be square meters and then we multiply 0 0.3 times 0 0.1 times 10 we are going to have 2 pascals plus uh, 0 0.3 uh, here we are now having newtons per square meter and this is uh, converted to pascal we should know that one pascal is equal to one newton per square meter so if we say two pascal plus 0 0.3 we are going to get our final answer is 2.3 pascals so that was the answer on b part two let's move on to part c it is saying explain why the base of a dam is broader or thicker than the top so you should know that the pressure of water stored in the dam increases with the depth. So the bottom of the dam is broader to support the increase in water pressure. Let me re-explain again. Pressure of water stored in the dam increases with the depth. The bottom of dam is broader at the bottom to support the increase in water pressure. Let us move on to the next question. We are supposed to describe how a siphon works. So first I'm going to explain what is a siphon. It is a simple device that is used to transfer liquid from a higher point to lower point without the use of pump. So I'm now going to explain how it works. It works by using atmospheric pressure to push liquid from a higher point to a lower point when the liquid in the siphon is pulled down by gravity it creates a vacuum that pulls the liquid up and over the top of siphon and into the lower container so this is an example of siphon um it is a model of a siphon being used to drain a liquid. Same question was examined in November 2021, asking the same question, which is saying, uh, describe how the siphon works. So when certain amount of water moves the bend into the siphon, uh, the graphite is going to pull it down on the long leg and the lower atmospheric pressure on the other side pressure becomes stronger and forces the rest of water up and over the bend in the siphon let us move on to the next question in part two we are supposed to state in other application where pressure is excited to a fluid uh, so the liquid pressure is utilized in dams and water behaviors to control the flow of water and generate hydroelectric power it is also used in the irrigation system the liquid pressure is used in irrigation system to distribute water to crops efficiently and also to measure the blood pressure we need um, 
it is the application of pressure that is excited to a fluid and also in firefighting uh, the liquid pressure is crucial in firefighting equipment such as fire horses and fire hydrants this was the complete solution of number 14 that was in june 2024 let us now move on to number 15 number 15 a part one we are supposed to define the term electric current electric current is defined as flow of electrons in a wire we can also define electric current as charge over time uh, let us move on to part two it is saying state the standard international unit of voltage and current uh, so the SI unit of voltage is volts and then the SI unit of current is amphis. Then part B, fig 15.1 shows an incomplete circuit. Uh, we are supposed to name the component that should be connected the position that is lab labeled one. So if, at this position, we are supposed to connect a switch. A switch is the one that is going to allow electricity to flow when it is um, connected to be on and then when it is connected to be off uh, the electricity is not going to flow in the circuit let us move on to part two on part two we are supposed to describe the function of component that is labeled two uh, this is uh, the ammeter uh, you get the first mark by just saying that it is a meter and then you say a meter is used to measure the current so we say a meter is component that is labeled two it is used to measure electric current over a given period of time and then part three we are supposed to describe the arrangement of bulbs in the circuit they are in parallel when we are saying a parallel circuit, it is the one that is having two or more paths for the electricity to flow. Uh, the bulbs are parallel to each other. So bulbs are in parallel. Parallel circuit is the one that have two or more paths for the electricity to flow. The bulbs are going to be parallel to each other, meaning that there is an equal distance between the bulbs then part c fig 15.2 shows another electric circuit it's supposed to calculate the total resistance of the resistors in the circuit so you should know that if the resistors are connected in parallel uh, the formula of calculating resistance is we are going to say product over the sum so the product we are going to say two times two so write 2 times 2 and then the sum we say 2 plus 2 it is going to be uh, 4 over 4 which is equal to 1 and resistance is measured in ohms so we write 1 ohm and then lastly we are supposed to state the ohm's law uh, the ohm's law state that voltage is uh, directly proportional to current it means that when we increase the voltage, uh, the current is also going to increase. So this was the complete solution of number 15 that was in June 2024. Uh, this marks the end of our tutorial today on combined science paper 2 that was written in June 2024. Uh, thank you so much guys for following me on this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos. Uh, if you want to join my WhatsApp classes, uh, you can contact me on 0776 882 4159.